Amen. Amen. Good to see everybody tonight. Y'all stand up. Let's sing a little bit tonight. We're going to sing I'll Fly Away. Worship team's going to lead it. Sing with your heart out. The words are on the screen. Y'all go ahead. neighbor's hand tonight.
everybody nice. will be happy. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to be happy here. Yes, right. Yes. Sis, sis, before we get started, can I say something real quick, please? Everybody, I want to I wanna first address the situation that's going on with Timmy. Um, he woke up Thursday unable to move his left leg. He didn't tell me what was going on Thursday evening when I got home from work. He was laid up on the couch and couldn't even get up. He had not been able to use the bathroom. We got him to the hospital. They thought he had a stroke. They thought he had something else going on. They did every test under the sun, MRIs, CT scans, the full stroke workup and everything. They had him admitted by midnight, a room by three, by four in the morning. I had to turn around and take my son back to the emergency room. I have struggled over the past week with everything that's been going on with my family, but glory be to God, I got to the hospital today and my husband was able to halfway lift up his leg. Thank the Lord. They've narrowed down the area that they need to work on surgery to his neck or his thoracic. They're going to start with his neck on Thursday morning and let that heal afterwards, maybe some therapy, and then go into doing his thoracic and then his lumbar. The prayers are working. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And if it wasn't for my church family to keep me grounded, Amen. I would have completely fell apart. Amen. So I want to thank you all and everybody. Please just be happy. <laughs> Amen. Before y'all showed up, I said, all right, I'm on a choir, dance for me. Y'all should have seen them. They were dancing. <laughs> y'all want to see them do it? <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> they were having a good time practicing. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessings tonight. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for another night to meet in your house. God, we pray, Lord, you bless the rest of the singing, the worship. And God, I pray for the preaching tonight, Lord. Touch my voice, God. And Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, we leave out of here and we go celebrate Miss Logan's birthday. God, I pray she feel loved. Lord, I pray she feel cared for. But ultimately, uh, Lord, I pray, God, that she knows that Jesus loves her more than anybody, God. And I thank you for the friends and family that are here tonight. Thank you for the church family that showed back up tonight. We're so thankful for that. So, Lord, I'm praying for the rest of this hour. God, just bless it. And I pray you get all the honor and glory out of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Uh, real quickly, I uh, just want to announce Wednesday night services once again. Uh, they, I'm getting a little bit of feedback out of the lapel. Um, uh, Wednesday night services at 6, all right, and we eat, and then we have church service at 7. We come in here and we worship. Uh, I preach. They play. They sing. We, we do the whole church service, all right, and then they go out in children's church. Uh, they go out on Wednesday nights, and they learn for the Lord, all right? And so we are really excited about our Wednesday night program around here. God's really blessing. And uh, we're thankful for you being here back tonight. Uh, do y'all know this is like the first worship service type atmosphere we've had on a Sunday night in over a month? Somebody say amen. Because all we've done is eat. Amen. We're going to eat again tonight. Hey. The Bible, the church was started. The Bible says they break bread and they prayed. Amen. You can't have church without breaking bread. Amen. Amen. If, <laughs> listen, if your New Year's resolution <coughs> is to lose weight, don't come to this church and eat. Amen. <laughs> you ain't losing weight around here. There's too many good cooks, too many people like to cook, and uh, you ain't going to lose no weight around here, all right? But anyways, and we learned in Daniel chapter number one, you do it God's way, you're going to be fatter and fairer anyways. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Anyways, but thank y'all so much for being back here tonight. Uh, what, what, in, uh, man, church was good this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. And uh, I sure appreciate you being here for that. Once again, thank you leaders. Thank you my men. Thank you all the ones that work and behind the scenes. I know you don't, your name ain't out on the marquee. And a lot of times a lot of people work behind the scenes and don't get thanked or appreciated enough, and uh, I sure do appreciate every single one of y'all. Uh, you make Stockton Baptist Church, Stockton Baptist Church, so we do appreciate it. And uh, so tonight, as we uh, head into the next song, they're going to sing a song that we're familiar with. They've been singing for a while now. It's called More Than Enough. And, uh, and I'll tell you, our theme for this year is God is able, but I will tell you this, that, that Jesus is enough. And everything that you go through this year, all right? Listen, the devil is attacking not only a church as a whole, but he's attacking the individuals, Amen. all right? And he doesn't want nobody to be on fire for him. He doesn't want not one person in this church to be on fire for God. He doesn't want Bible study. He doesn't want people coming to an altar and the whole church coming down and praying with them. He doesn't want you being excited about what's going on here and telling everybody about it. He don't want that. Amen. So what's he going to do? He's just going to start trying to attack little by little, little by little to try to destroy what God has done. But I want to encourage you tonight that Jesus is more than enough. Amen. But don't just take my word for it. Take the word of God for it. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail amen. against my church. Somebody say amen. And I'm here to encourage you tonight. This is his church. This is his ministry. And this is his work and only his work. And my job as a pastor is to glorify him, amen. preach him, and preach him to you and get you closer to him. And I promise you, I promise you, no matter how much the devil attacks, no matter how much comes against this church, God will take care of his church tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Y'all worship. Use the altars tonight. Get around the church. Get around the altars tonight as a church family. And remember, Jesus is more than enough. Y'all sing. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus stood by the wayside begging, cried out to Jesus, for he knew the chance he was taking. The crowd said, be quiet, don't bother him now. But the more that they pressed him, the louder he'd shout, thou son of David, have mercy on me and today I believe he can see and he is more than enough to make a blind man to see he's more than 
enough to guide you and me. He's more than enough to turn the water to wine. He's more than enough to feed a family like mine. He's more than enough to heal all diseases. And he's more than enough to wash the sin out of me. If he can raise up the dead and give them new life, then Jesus is more than said to the Lord, my daughter is dying at home. Another man said, she's dead, leave the master alone. When he heard what was said, his heart was grieved. He said, be not afraid, but only believe. Then he spoke to the child, I say, I blind man to see and he's more than enough to guide you and me he's more than enough to turn the water to wine he's more than enough to feed a family like mine he's more than enough to heal all disease and he's more than enough to wash the sin out of me if he can raise up the dead and give them new life, then Jesus is more than enough. And he is more than enough to make the blind man to see. And he's more than enough to guide you and me. He's more than enough to turn the water to wine. He's more than enough to feed a family life. wash your sin out of me if he can raise up the dead and give them new life then jesus is more than enough if he can raise up the dead and give them new life then jesus is more than Blessing. What a blessing. I'll say this. Nothing, nothing against it, but a lot of churches don't even have nothing on Sunday nights anymore. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And um, but it sure is nice to be able to come in on a Sunday night at six, sing songs that glorify the Lord Jesus, and to hear God's word, and to still leave out of here. And feel, and feel God move. Amen. Amen. And uh, like I said, I enjoy what, uh, that tonight. Thank you so much. You got your Bibles? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. I got a surprise for y'all tonight. And you'll have to just wait and see. And uh, somebody gave me an early Christmas present. Amen. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Brother Riley, I love you. Amen. But uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, Amen. I done, uh, I, done, uh, I done wore out the other laser pointer that Miss Victoria got me. I done wore it out. So Brother Riley said, man, I'm colorblind, Brother Trent. He says, I need something that everybody... Well, hang on, hang on, I got it right here. He said, right here that everybody can see, amen? <laughs> so, hey, hey, and then even light me up too, amen? But, uh, but uh, hey, Brother Riley got me that. Thank you, brother, I appreciate it. Amen, amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, if you don't have uh, your Bible with you tonight, we'll have it on the screen. We're going to read down to verse number 6, and, uh, and, and we'll see what God was going to give us this morning. We didn't get to it, but we're going to get to it tonight. Amen? Amen. All right, look what it says. It's saying, therefore, all right, seeing we have this ministry, okay, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, okay, 
In 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, sorry, 1 Corinthians, all right, was the epistle that he wrote to them the first time, a church that he had started. He, he stayed 18 months there in a wicked, wicked place with idolatry. Sexual immorality was at its high. Greek mythology, all these false gods and goddesses. He was in a place that was wicked. And he went there and he started a church. And he started a church and it was doing good for a while, but he got away as he went and started other churches. And word got back to him that they wasn't doing some things right. Matter of fact, let's just go through it a little bit off the top of my mind. They had some sexual immorality going on where they had a man that was with his stepmom. That's all I can say because we got young children in here. And the Bible says that they were so puffed up with pride that they would not even vote the man out. They were just trying to sweep it under the rug. And he said, even the lost world, the Gentiles, know that this is wrong. Can I tell you something? I shouldn't have to convince saved people that sin is still wrong. But it shouldn't surprise us when lost people know that sin is still wrong. But it should surprise us when people say that they're born again of God and got the Holy Spirit living inside of them when they try to sweep sin under the rug. Somebody say amen. So we know that was going on. We know that he discussed marriage and different things like that. He also gets over there in the beginning of 2 Corinthians and he says that you voted this man out. He got overturned to Satan to the destruction of the flesh and the man ended up getting right and he repented and he was restored unto the church. But as he's still writing to them, he is letting them know that there's still some things that they have to accomplish. Can I tell you, in 2024, it's going to be a lot harder than 2023. And I want to tell you this by the inspiration of the Word of God and as the pastor of this church, I want everybody to be with us as we try to carry out the Great Commission and what God would have for us. But do not be surprised that everybody that starts in this battle does not finish in this battle because we've seen in Daniel chapter number 1 that there was only four boys out of thousands that stood up for God. Y'all get with me tonight. Listen, not everybody's going to stay in the fight that is in the fight. But we are here tonight on a Sunday night to learn what God's Word has for us. And I'm about to show you something that's going to help you with 2024. But you and I have been given a ministry just like the Apostle Paul was given and he was trying to inspire the church in Corinth. But I'm telling you tonight, the more you do for God, the more you get on fire for God, the more you come faithfully to church, the more you start saying, Signing up for things. I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if the devil wasn't knocking and he starts to knocking. Don't be surprised. And men, women, that he don't try to start destroying your marriage. Hey, some of you grandpas and grandmas, you need to be praying for the young folks because they're going to start signing up for the Lord and the devil's going to attack them. Can I tell you tonight, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And sometimes that person isn't your enemy. It's just Satan trying to destroy what God's doing. I'm just trying to give you fair warning. Listen, don't be surprised that 2024 is going to be not easier than 2023. 2024 might be a hard year. We may have some struggles, but God is able. God is able, man. Seeing we we, that's us, have this ministry. This ministry, okay? As we have received mercy, we faint. No, I can't get in my mess. I got to keep going. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse number three. But if our gospel... Be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. God forbid preachers who only preach of themselves. You got 66 books Brother Tommy is a Sunday school teacher. Somebody help me. You got 66 books. You never run out of curriculum. Somebody say amen. But what we do is this. But Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Y'all didn't get it. 
For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, your servants, here is the key to the text, to the scripture tonight, for the preacher's sake, for the deacon's sake, for whose sake? You don't serve me because it's me. You serve me because it's Jesus' sake. I serve you, not because it's necessarily you. I love you, man, but I serve you for Jesus' sake. When you learn that you're serving people and loving people and you're doing it for Jesus' sake, it makes you have a more humbling attitude. Amen. Amen. Because some people are a lot easier to serve (laughs) than others. Can I get a witness? Some people are just aggravating, ain't they? Some people just don't listen. And then they some, they just soak it all up, right? But we can't go to the ones that are just easy. We can't go to the ones that necessarily all the time agree with us. We can't just go serve the ones that like and smell and talk the same way we do. We got to serve the ones that ain't just like us or different skin color or speak a different language. Because when you learn it's for Jesus' sake, it'll keep you humble. About to prove to you. About to prove to you in just a minute. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me up with the Holy Spirit tonight as I preach. Bless your word tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For Jesus' sake in 2024, I want you to see five reasons. All right, and they ain't got no sub points, but it's five reasons tonight. For Jesus' sake, on why we are going to try to carry out what God has told us to do in 2024. When I mean by that, when I said God is able, God is able. But at the end of the day, You and I have an obligation for Jesus' sake. That spiritual gift that God's given you is for Jesus' sake. That talent you have isn't to be hidden under a bushel and put under a bed. It's for Jesus' sake. That money you have in your pocket and your bank account that God has asked you to give to the church or to the ministry to help the furtherance of the gospel, it ain't for you. It's for Jesus' sake. Oh, he doesn't start talking about money. That's the first time I've ever talked about money in this church. I'm just trying to encourage you Sometimes we look at things on a selfish sake instead of for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Let's dive into this thing now. I know it's getting good, I am. For Jesus' sake, we have a ministry. Verse number one, we just read it. Back to verse number one. As we have received mercy, (laughs) Paul preached his gospel humbly. He knew his glorious calling to ministry was not due to his own works, but by mercy. Mercy by its very nature is undeserved. Paul preached his gospel boldly. When Paul considered the greatness of his calling, it gave him heart to face all his difficulties. We often faint because we do not consider how great a calling God gives us in Jesus. To faint here means to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied out, to be exhausted. I got ahead of myself, but I want you to look at this word. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... This is not Pastor Trent's ministry. This is Jesus Christ's ministry. This is God's will for this church cast through a under-shepherd to the chief shepherd. I am not a lord over God's heritage. I've simply been here as put as a man to be the mouthpiece and be the leader and try to lead by example by loving the flock and preaching the word of God. Somebody say amen. But we all are a part of this ministry. You and I, every single one of us, have a job to do. Say, I don't believe it. I'm about to show you something. Seeing therefore, therefore seeing we have this ministry as, look, we have this ministry. Seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. Preacher just didn't get mercy to get in this thing. 
I'm not the only one with a testimony in the building, am I? I hope to God you're all saved in here tonight. If you're not, then we need to get you saved. But how'd you get saved? By mercy. How do you stay in this thing? By mercy. How do you get your sins forgiven? By mercy. How do you work for God? By mercy. How do you worship God? Because His mercies endure forever. How do you serve when you don't feel like you're good enough to serve? Because of God's mercy. But when you neglect the ministry, you're saying His mercy ain't good enough. Come on. When you sit there and you can look at God and you say, I'm not going to get involved, I'm not going to do my job, I'm not going to help the cause, I'm not going to do what the Lord has called me to do to help this ministry, you are saying to Him, His mercy is not good enough. See, we like to think, we voted Him in, He's the new pastor, it is His vision, it is His ministry, He do all the work. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right. Come on. I am doing a lot of things around here, and I, I have kind of overloaded my wagon. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> but I'm going to get through it. <laughs> I know that I know in, 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 in well-doing in due season, I, if I don't faint, I will reap. Amen. Amen. And somebody, one of y'all said it one time, oh, you young enough, you can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> they keep me straight. Amen. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, when you look at God and you say, mm -mm, I ain't doing that. Come on. Mm -mm, I'm not serving her. Mm -mm. I know there's a need. Mm -mm. Come on. You're telling him his mercy is not good enough. That's right. Come on. You liking it, Brother Tommy? It's good, ain't it? Man, I love it too. <laughs> I can count on Brother Tommy and Brother Phil. When nobody else says amen, they say amen. Amen. <laughs> I got a joke. <laughs> we went out to lunch today, and uh, Grace and Sean asked us to go out, and uh, we was like, well, we was going to go do our own thing. We're buying. Okay, we're heading with y'all. <laughs> so we went with them, Brother Dennis, and we ran into Jacob uh, and Ashley, too. And um, anyways, we was up there, and we were talking to them, and Miss, uh, Miss Grace said, Miss Logan, I ain't going to lie to you now. I come to that church, and you were amen, and I ain't never seen no woman amen like that <laughs> in no Baptist church. I said, sis, I was preaching a youth rally at a, at a big church in San Antonio, Texas, and all these youth kids and all these adults were there, and all them kids were amen. And, well, we went back a couple months later to a revival there. The Rochesters were playing. Anybody heard of the Rochesters? They were playing, and uh, the preacher got out there to preach it, and Logan's out there going, amen, like she doesn't hear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And them older ladies in that church were going, <laughs> And the more they look, the more she say, Glory to God! Hey! She knows the mercy of God. She knows the mercy of God. Some of you tonight, you've experienced His mercy. You've experienced His grace. If that's not motivation enough for Jesus' sake to get involved in the work of God, me begging you, me texting you, me encouraging oh, you, right. me preaching messages to get people involved will never do enough. Right. 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 We have a ministry and we have received mercy. Amen. And it don't stop right there, Miss Melissa. He says this, as we've received mercy, we faint not. Can I tell you something? Serving God ain't easy. Yeah. Serving God ain't popular. Serving God ain't always got everybody on your side. But I'm telling you right now, when the devil's attacking, you just got to hold your head up high and trust what the Word of God says and just continue on doing because if we faint not, we will reap in due season. And if God shows us mercy and Jesus has been good to us, it does not matter what comes against us. Just hold on tight and enjoy what God's doing. He says, faint not. His mercy keeps us from fainting tonight. When all hell breaks out on you for serving God, remember His mercy. So how do you remember His mercy? Does these come off the wall? Oh, they do. 
Think about this. When he was naked and beaten and brutalized and bruised and he and he was his beer with beer was plucked and he was spit on and he was slapped and he was mocked and he could have spoke and said he could have destroyed them. And he walked up to Villa Della Rosa and he carried his cross and he couldn't even carry it all the way. He was so weak they had to get a man named Simon, the Cyrenian, a black man to help him carry the cross. And he carried that cross not because he was a sinner, but he was carrying it for you so you would have eternal life one day so you could serve him in 2024 and have your sins forgiven. And through him, through you, people would get saved. That's the mercy I'm talking about. That is the mercy I'm talking about. When you feel like throwing a towel in, you guys think he didn't throw the towel in? Amen. When you feel like you're just aggravating and you can't go on and you're saying, I just can't do it no more, it's too hard. Remember, he didn't do that. He continued on. He went to the cross for you and for me. Yeah. But it don't stop right here, Brother Jacob. Brother Denny, it don't stop right there. If we lay our crosses down, what are we leaving for the next generation? Come on. Come on. What are we leaving for them kids? All these young people. Langston and Tegan. If all of us to say, oh, it's just too hard, or just ain't really what I thought it was going to be like, lay them across down. Y'all don't get mad now. I know it's okay. We'll put it back. How many people over the years have you seen laid across down? When you realize the mercy of God is good enough for you, it's good enough for the ministry, and it's good enough for the next person. If we all throw our crosses down that God's given us and His mercy's not good enough, we're not leaving anything for the next generation. Well, the other church down the road, I'm not counting on them. Well, the Christians down there, we can't. God's given us a ministry here. And if we all just throw it in and say it ain't good enough, we're spitting in God's face. His mercy is not good enough. And when you realize His mercy is good enough, even when you're wearied, even when you're tired, even when you can't sleep at night, even when you've been hurt, even when you've made mistakes, even when you have fallen, you realize, man, His mercy is good enough. When you have fallen on your face and you get back up and you say, His mercy is good enough, I'm going to continue on. That's right, That's right. 2024. It's here. It's here. It's here, Mama. How many in 2023? You already been contemplating on throwing. Mm, help us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Giving up. Come on, brother. Yeah, right. It's too hard. Come on. Don't do it. I know some of you that was fighting you. Got mercy. You've received mercy. That's right. You have a ministry. Yeah. You have a job to do. That's right. You're here for the next generation. That's right. That's right. We're trying to leave something for somebody else that died for us. People died for the Bible. People died for the faith. When we don't, when we don't carry on and we just, we faint, we're giving up on God. He never gave up on us. Amen. And I did not have that in my notes to do that, but that was good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let me ask you again. In 2023, God gave you a job to do. Are you going to continue to strive to do it in 2024? Not for my sake but for Jesus' sake. Amen. Number two, preach fast. I'm burning up. I'll never wear a sweater to the church again. I knew I was in trouble when Brother Denny walked in in short sleeves. I said, man, I'm going to burn up tonight. And I can't take it off because there's a lambs T-shirt underneath. That's just not polite and politically correct to wear. Not in Lanier County, amen. Oh, I can't. They'll stone me for that. Amen. <laughs> we, we bulldogs around here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, y'all got me messed up. Stop laughing. All right. Verse number two. 
but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That word renounce means to speak out, set forth, declare to forbid. Dishonesty means a thing to be ashamed of. Paul didn't preach a concealed gospel, renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty, or a corruptive gospel, craftiness or deceitfulness, mixing the message with human ingenuity, I think that's the word I'm quoting it, or watering it down to accommodate his audience. I will never, ever, but while I got breath in my lungs, water down this Bible. I will never preach to tinkle ears. I'm going to preach the Word of God with passion and with love and with boldness. And who listens, who listens, who don't, I got to do the best I can do. And you too, too. You can't water down nothing. Paul didn't. You don't do it. Paul preached an honest gospel. Paul preached his gospel honestly. The ancient Greek word translated deceitful is a uh, verb only found here in the New Testament meaning to dilute or adulterate. Many preachers fail on this exact point as they have the true gospel, but they add to it things of human wisdom. Often they add things corrupting or diluting things to the gospel because they think adding them will make the gospel more effective or give it a greater hearing. They are still doing what Paul insisted he would never do, handling the Word of God deceitfully. He says this. I'm trying to figure this thing out. All right, there we go. But have renounced. That means we've called out, we've set forth, we've pushed away the hidden things of dishonesty. Hidden things means concealed. Dishonesty means things shame, shameful. What does he mean by that, Brother Trent? I was quoting commentary, but here this is Brother Trent's commentary. He's saying it like this if he stood in the pulpit today. He says, as a preacher of the Word of God and as a Christian, if you're going to have a ministry and you're going to have mercy and you're not going to faint and you're going to live for God, you have got to push out hidden anything that is wrapped up in sin. Anything that will cause you to stumble, you've got to push it out of your way. Does that make sense? The hidden things. Anything that will keep you from fully serving God. We're about to see in just a minute why you have a purpose. But I'm telling you tonight, you can have things in your mind. You can have things in your heart. You can be looking at things, watching things. You can leave out of here worshiping God, singing He's more than enough. I'll fly away. Hey, everybody will be happy to get in the car, to play boot scooting boogie, drinking and partying, all these dirt road riding good old boys. Oh, go drink a beer with Jesus in heaven, whatever they're singing on country music. I'm not saying it to send you to hell but it will make you carnal as the day is long and you won't be spiritual you will be wrestling all during 2024 but he said when you get saved you have a new song in your heart make songs and songs in your heart singing melodies praising the Lord we like to blame the preacher for our walk but nine times out of ten we walk out we don't even take the word he was trying to tell us and we go out there we come into a spiritual house, spiritual word. We hear the word of God, a man from heaven, and we listen, and then we go out there and we listen to what the world offers. Yeah. Yeah. He says, for you to be able to do it and be able to do it and not faint, That's right. you're going to push some things out your life. That's right. Thy word have I in my heart. Amen. Am I not sinning against thee? He said, not only that, he said, we pushed away. We, we got rid of things that are uh, dishonesty and shamefulness. He said, but also we're not walking in craftiness. Now, this one is where it kind of eats at me. I can go all the way with you. Listen to me. I can go all the way with you. I will lay my life down for you, whether you believe it or not. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. I've preached it in here. You've heard it. I'll lay my life down for you. I will love you. I won't show favor to nobody. I will love every single one of you the best I can. If I ain't good enough for you, I'm sorry. But one thing I'll do, and I can't put up with, is this. I'll go with you all the way through thick and thin. But I can't handle it if you're going to lie to me. If you lie to me, you'll steal from me. 
That's just me. Craftiness. How bad is it in the world? Yeah. You shake a man's hand and you know you can't trust the word. But good God Almighty, you shake a man's hand in church, you should be able to trust them, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Craftiness. Yep. You are not going to be able to, for Jesus' sake, do anything for God. Listen to me. And do it holy and acceptable if you're crafty outside these churches. You ever talk to somebody? You'll say, man, they're a good person. And they'll say, man, you can't believe anything they say. Boy, y'all got quiet. I helped y'all with something. I learned this a long time ago in my first church. When somebody's coming to you and they say things like this and they talk about this person and they talk about that person and they say da-da-da and they say da-da-da, they're going to leave you. And they're going to go to her, and they're going to talk about you. That's craftiness. That's deceitfulness. I ain't saying it's going in the church. But I want to stop it before it happens. What are you trying to say? If we are going to do something for God in 2024, we can't have no deceitfulness, no craftiness, no dishonesty. We just got to preach the word and live the word. Say, prove it. I'm going to keep proving it. He said, not only walking in craftiness, he said, we didn't walk in craftiness. He said, we had a good lifestyle in front of you. He said, nor did we handle the word of God deceitfully. Woo! Every time I have stood behind this pulpit, before I even came when Brother Carlton was still here, all I have done is try to preach this word Front to back, back to front for what God's Word says. Amen. And I have not handled it deceitfully. Mm. You get me? Yeah. Okay. So he says, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully. And then he goes on, he said, but by the manifestation of truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I, I got something else I want to say about this, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully. Not only does the pastor need to not handle the Word uh, of God not deceitfully but you as a Christian tonight come on now get with me say I don't know it like you well, what are you doing to learn it That's hard. we got discipleship around here we got Sunday school we got Sunday night we got all kinds of good things for you to learn the word of God to learn how to use it not deceitfully somebody help me because there's a lot of bozos out there that are preaching and teaching the word deceitfully. And if you don't know your word, you'll fall for their junk. You've got to know what the word of God is teaching. I'm about to show y'all something. I'm telling you to help you. I'm about to show you something that's going to help you. It helped me when I was putting this together, man. He says, by the manifestation of the truth, Paul preached an openly true gospel. Anyone can look at what Paul preached and seen the plain truth of it. He did not preach an elaborate system of hidden mysteries. Committing ourselves to every man's conscience. This is good. About to show, man, I hope I'm going to show you something. It helped me. That's why I'm saying it helped me. Paul preached the gospel of integrity. Anyone could look at Paul's gospel and ministry then judge it by his or her own conscience and see it that it was full of integrity. Some men attacked Paul with words and some attacked him with actions. Nevertheless, Paul knew both his ministry and his message found approval in the conscience of every man, even if he would not admit it. In the sight of God, this is going to help some of you that are teachers. Paul preached his gospel before God. It was important to know Paul... Uh, it was important to Paul to know every man's conscience would approve his manner of ministry. Yes, but it was far more important to know that he did what was right in the sight of God. Amen. If I can preach the word and try to live the best I can and by the manifestation of the truth, I don't care if nobody, all, if some people don't like it, if they don't, if it, God's happy with it, I'm happy with it. Amen. And that's how you need to live your life too. Amen. Yeah. Because we are trying to please God. 
And when you try to please God, it's hard to please all men. Yep. In 2024, do you realize every single one of you has a meaning and purpose for Jesus' sake? Do you realize that this morning? I'm sorry, this afternoon. From the oldest to the youngest, you have a ministry. Right. You have a job to do. He says, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth. I want to help you with something. The truth always sets you free. Amen. Don't compromise. Amen. Always tell the truth. Amen. And I promise you, the truth will take care of itself. Amen. 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 I would say something else, but I'll move on. I, can't, I ain't getting hung up on that. All right, number three. For Jesus' sake, we have a mission. I ain't got no sub points on this, but look what it says. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to him that are lost. Right. In whom the God of this world... All right, let's do some teaching. Let's do some teaching. Miss Melissa, you came on a good night doing some teaching. Yeah. All right, now watch. But if our gospel, okay, be hid. Mm-hmm. See that word R? Yeah. Yeah. Who's R in here tonight? Hello. Say it. He didn't say the preacher's gospel. He said, our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are in time out. <laughs> it is hid to them that are lost. So I'm going to help some of you tonight. You ain't always been saved. Right. Getting baptized didn't save you either. Amen. Joining the church ain't saved you. Right. And mama carrying you nine months before you actually step foot in the church ain't saved you. That's right. You were either to God tonight, saved, lost, or carnal. Come on. Come on. And what I'm trying to say tonight is this. It ain't the preacher's gospel or even Stockton Baptist's gospel. It is Jesus' gospel. And when you are not being a witness for him, you are hiding it to them that are lost. Our mission this year is to take this outside of this place and to tell all them they're lost and they're going to hell. But you can come to Stockton at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, and you won't hear a watered-down gospel. You won't hear some funny stories. You won't hear something that makes you laugh. You'll hear a man get behind the pulpit. He'll shout a little bit. He'll scream a little bit. He'll make you cry. He'll make you laugh. He'll do all kinds of things, but he'll preach the Word. It'll convict you, but it'll set you free. That's one example you can do. Or you can do this. You can take what I taught you, how to lead somebody to the Lord, and take that what you have as a testimony, and you start sharing the gospel on your own, calling me up in the middle of the day, say, hey, I just went into the break room. So-and-so was asking me about my testimony. I shared my testimony. They said, I don't have a testimony like that. And I was able to take my phone, take the Bible, show them from God's Word, and they called on Jesus in the break room, and they got saved. It ain't happened yet. Nope. It ain't happened yet, but it can happen. Yeah. You know why it ain't happened? Because we've been hiding it. Yeah. We've been hiding it. We got 2,830 something followers on our church Facebook page. We run 100 people here on Sunday morning 120, 115, 100, 195, 80. It's up and down. It's up and down. It's going to be like that until we get more room. Somebody say amen. amen. What am I trying to tell you? You have an opportunity to go take the services, take some scripture on the Facebook page, go share it to all your friends on Facebook, show them, and get the gospel out there. That's one example. Some of you school teachers, some of you that work in different jobs, some of you that are retired, you're going everywhere. You know what you got to get in your mind? That you're going to tell everybody about somebody that, oh man, I messed it up. But you're going to tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. I was trying to sing that song, but I couldn't remember. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm just a nobody. I'm just a nobody right. Trying to tell everybody about somebody. That's right. Thank you, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Why are you doing it? For my sake? Yeah. Jesus' sake. Amen. Listen. When our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the little G God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. If you're still blinded by him tonight, you're not saved. How do you want to quit being blinded? Get saved. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, 
who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So when we take our little testimony and we leave it in our pockets and we take our Bible and we leave it on the, the pew when we leave out of church, somebody help me now. Come on. Come on. We know you ain't reading it at home. Take it home with you. Amen. Amen. But we got, I'm sorry, I'm leaning on you. We got tracks. We got, man, we got all kinds of technology. There's no reason. There's no reason. There is no reason for your gospel, our gospel, Jesus Christ's gospel, for somebody every day should be able to share it with somebody. We're up, we're, we, we don't have an excuse because he's shown us mercy. He has shown us mercy. But nobody is under it. We all have a job to do. Why are y'all getting quiet? Y'all were laughing a while ago. The vision's simple. We're going to do what God's words already told us to do. Yeah. Get the gospel out. All right, let's move fast. I'm done, I promise you. For Jesus' sake, we have a message. Uh, and for Jesus' sake, oh yeah, for Jesus' sake, we have a message. Verse number five, not even going to give you my notes. We got to go celebrate Miss Logan. Verse number five says this. Boom. All right, for we preach not ourselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Preach not ourselves. Yeah. 21 people got saved in 2023. I wasn't preaching myself, I was preaching Jesus. Amen. You don't preach yourself, preach Jesus. Amen. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your servants, Amen. for Jesus' sake. Amen. This man started the church, Brother Leon. He was an apostle. He seen Jesus out of due season. But he was humble enough to say, I am your servant. Right. We'll help somebody tonight. Miss Jane, if you will, come on, we'll play, play an invitation. I'm done. Hey, I'm going to help somebody tonight. <laughs> All this, by gospel being hid, him showing us mercy, keeping you from fainting, ain't going to do nothing for you until you realize one thing and one thing only. Even me. You and I are nothing more than a servant. Amen. He washed the disciples' feet. But he washed one that would betray him too. People have asked me, Brother Trent, how do you do it if people hurt you and have hurt you in the ministry? Because I look at it like this. The Bible tells me to be, I think it's seasoned with salt, showing grace, and be, to be good to all men. I try my best to find the best in everybody. Me and Brother Denny talked about that Friday. I try to find the best in everybody. And just because I've been hurt or you've been hurt doesn't mean everybody we try to serve is going to hurt us. Right. Preacher told me this week, he said, love is tough. Yeah, yeah. That's why we do it, for love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. There's going to be people you serve are going to take you for granted. There's going to be people you serve and they're not going to tell you thank you. There's going to be people you serve they'll use you and abuse you. But there's going to be people you serve that are going to serve you back. You don't do it for me. You don't do it for the church's sake. You do it for Jesus' sake. In verse number 6, For God who commanded this light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He quotes Genesis 1 when God said, Let there be light. The Bible says that light is shining in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That light is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. So my question for you tonight. Boy, y'all y'all went from being shouting to just... <laughs> yeah, man, this is exciting. Oh. Hey. Vision's simple. God's able. Amen. We've received mercy. We're not going to faint, right? This is my question. You've been, you, you had a lot to chew on in these six little verses. It's my question for you tonight. Don't come do it because I ask you. Come do it because you mean business. If 
you're a leader in this church and you serve in some capacity, I want you to come down here and I want you to make a vow to the Lord. Only if you're going to try your best to keep it. That you're going to do the will of God for your life in 2024 for Jesus' sake.